You've probably seen this trend of wipe coding. And if you still don't know what it is, well, basically it's a way where you develop software with using AI. So there are multiple tools that allow you to do so like Cursor, Lovable, but now Google also have joined the trend and they've created their own vibe coding tool called Firebase Studio. So in this video, we'll give a try to their free version and see if it's actually good. We'll try to create a full app with the database where the user will be able to see our content under the paid wall. So they'll have to have an account. So maybe we can use it to sell our own course or some other things. And for those who don't know me, my name is Arthur. I'm a senior software engineer. I've been building startups for many years now. And if you'd like to reach out, hit an email under this video. And without any further ado, Let's get into it. So to get started, we'll have to go to the Firebase Studio website. I'll leave a link under the video. And the way you start here is basically you prototype an app with the prompt first. So in our case, I want to set up an app where a user will have email and password, and maybe we'll add some extra things as we go. So we can obviously use the Firebase database, but I actually want to test something different. I want to see if it can actually work with external databases like Superbase. So to get started, I'll start with a prompt. Can you create an app where a user will have to log in to view the page. The page can't be viewed unless the user is signed in. Page that is secret will be showing. Hello, use super base for it. So let's click prototype with AI to get started. So what you'll see is that it will give you this overall idea of what it wants to do. It gives you the colors even for your app, the app name, brand guidelines almost. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click prototype this app. And as you can see, it already started writing the code for us. So it'll generate the whole code library. So not just a single file where later we can interact with the code, like edit it manually. But even if you don't know how to code, you can simply use the chat interface to change things in the app. So we can see that it's still generating files for us. So as you can see, it already throws some errors and uh, it has a button for us where we can fix the error. So basically it'll copy the error output and put it back to AI and AI will go into the loop of adjusting the code. So we didn't have to copy the error, which is pretty cool, which is I like because most of the time when you use AI and you're trying to build something, you'll have to copy the error manually. And I think the second one is even more important. So the issues that we're seeing is that to use the actual super base we need to provide our own credentials go ahead on the superbase.com and here you can click create new project we can say test we'll add a password so ideally you locate the database closer to your server or towards your users it is okay to keep central europe for me so i'll go ahead and click create new project here once you create a project let's go ahead and go to the project settings i'll we'll go into data api and here we can find some keys and links that we might need. So I'll go ahead and instruct AI to add this menu. Let's see if it can do so. So I'll say here are my super base creds URL of the database. Then we'll go ahead and say here are project API keys, public key, secret key. Let's reveal. So guys, after this video, obviously gonna delete this project. So there is no need to copy my keys here. Insert them for me and use them. So let's see if it can do so for us. It went so fast that at this point, it's hard to tell if it's interacting with the .n file or with something else. I might be able to see, but right now we're in this mode where everything is changing. All right, so it looks like we do have something here. The app is called OutGuardian. I'm not logged in. For default, I decided that we want to log in with Google for some reason, but let's give it a try. In order to have Google authentication, we need to enable this in our Superbase configuration. So here's the list of all of the auth providers that you can enable. We can enable, as I mentioned, Google, but for this, we'll need to register a whole new app. So let's keep it simple and just say that email authentication is enabled. So what we'll do here is we'll say, don't use Google authentication, rather use a simple email default authentication. Well, it looks like the whole app crashed. So let me refresh the page. Okay. Even though that the app crashed, we still see that it updated the code for us. So we can sign in, but what if we want to create an account? So we'll say, create an option for us. That was pretty fast actually. So I'll go ahead and click sign up. So we'll use 10 minute email for this. Click sign up. I don't know if anything happened <laughs> when user clicks sign in and sign up. We should store his account in the user table. So also give me the code for the SQL command that I'll insert to the super base so it'll create the user table for us. So let's see if we can do something like this. Okay. So we'll go ahead and copy this command. We'll go to the SQL editor here. We'll go ahead and insert our command, we'll hit run. After this, we should go to the tables and we should see users table being created with email, created at and ID fields. Okay, so let's go ahead and see 
If now something happened, so I'll go ahead and refresh, sign up. You can see on the background that we received an email from our previous registration where we can confirm our email. User already entered our database, but I think what we should do for the demo purpose is somehow turn off the confirmation email when we do an authentication. So we'll go authentication. And here in the email settings, I think we can remove this. We can set up what the password requirement should be, blah, blah, blah. So we can click save. Let's try to sign in with the old one. See if it worked. Yay, we are able to sign in with our account that we just created. We removed the confirmation by email. So that's pretty cool. Here you can see the <laughs> private page. Let's click sign out. Wrong example.com, some wrong password. Let's click sign in, nothing happens. We should probably actually uh, prompt the app to show errors. So let's see if that will work because Obviously it didn't sign us in, but it never also showed us the reason. But that's already crazy that we build an app where we can basically create an account, use this email, use the password, sign in into the app and see the private page. But before we continue, I want to show you something really cool. Have you ever wondered how you can scrape data from any website without any complex automations or code? Well, I have a great solution for you. For that, I want to recommend you to Thunderbit, the sponsor of today's video. So with this tool, you can actually scrape leads, products, lineage pages, extract reviews, scrape people on LinkedIn, emails, and so much more. All you have to do is install their plugin called Thunderbit. And then once you launch the plugin, it is super simple to use. So for example, here we have different people like their name, their position, their email, their phone number, their location. And where with most of the scraping tools, I would have to enter this data manually. Here, they actually have the smart AI that can suggest the data that I need based on the website that I'm at. That is pretty mind blowing. So let's go ahead and test this. I'll go ahead and click AI suggest columns. So as you can see, figure out that we might need full name, profile image, job title, and all the things that we might see that are useful on the page. We'll go ahead and click scrape. And that might take a couple of seconds. And as you see, it already went ahead and scraped this page with these people. And boom, there we have it. We have a fully functioning table that we can download and use this data how we want, basically. So I highly recommend you giving it a try. And I'll leave the link in the description. Now back to the video. So now the next step, once we add the error messages, we'll figure out the way where we allow only certain users that will create accounts to view our page. So for example, you have a paid product, you want the users to create accounts, but only once you approve them, for example, after they paid, then you click allow the access. Let's see if it works. Test, blah, blah, blah. some wrong things. Unfortunately, I still do not see any error indications, but to create another account, since we disabled the email confirmation, I can basically put whatever email I want. Test at example.com. I will put the best one, two, three, four, five, six. Since the six is the minimum requirement that we had, go ahead and try to click sign in. Let's go to the super base. Boom. Once the user clicks sign in, that's where we see him in our users database since we mapped the values here and authentication is being handled separately. So that's pretty cool. So what I want to change now is in our users table, I will introduce a new column. It'll be something like confirmed and it'll be defaulted to false. So everybody who creates their account will be defaulted to false. And the second we switch it to true manually here in our database, that's when they should have an access. So let's update this logic. To create something like this, we simply need to go ahead and click insert column and we'll call column as I mentioned something like is confirmed. The type will be Boolean, which is true or false. Default value will be false. Go ahead and click save. So as you can see, all of the users now are not confirmed. Let's go ahead and add this instruction. So now our users table has a new column called is confirmed. It defaults to false when user creates his account. So we should add an extra check that if the value is true, only then allow them to view the secret page. If the value is false, then show them the message. They should wait for confirmation. So let's see if AI understands us clearly. I gave name or a column that we freshly created, but when I'm looking at the speed that is changing code, for me, that's crazy. Like it's already did it. That's amazing. Let's see if it uh, worked. So test example.com. So the password one, two, three, four, five, six, sign up. Count pending confirmation, which is correct. So let's say we have a client, we have a secret page with our course or whatever, and the user will sign in and they will see, sorry, but you're still not confirmed. Wait your confirmation. So then 
we as the core seller or the owner of the website simply go to our Superbase website. Here we find our user. We see when he was created and we can easily change is confirmed to true. So here we'll go ahead and set true. Let's uh, try to re-log in to the account and see if it worked. Test at example.com. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sign in. So now we can see our secret page and only authenticated users can view this page. But that's no longer true. Only authenticated and those who have is confirmed true can view this page. The issue is still there. I am automatically logged out. So we provided it some extra details on how it works. So let's see if it's able to handle this case for us. So test example.com one, two, three, four, five, six, sign in. Okay. I don't know if, by the way, if refreshing here, we'll keep the state. So that's the main downside of developing with AI, even though it's extremely fast, but sometimes it has an issue and you're trying to communicate this issue many times to the AI and it still cannot figure this out. But keep in mind, we're not using the most advanced Gemini version here. We're using the free version. So this is the purity of the test. So I'm experiencing the same issues live. So there is no hiding here. Okay, sign in, refresh the page. Well, kind of feel like I want to give up on the holding sessions thing. So let's change our secret page to something more interesting. Like we put a mock. Okay. Let's change our secret page text. So I'm a visual person. So I like to add things like this instead of just saying secret page. Let's see if we can add something for us that is more creative. Sign in. Okay. So let's just say this is our private course or PDF or whatever it is, but we can see it here and it's only available once the user has account and the user is confirmed by the admin because we don't want anybody just to create account and view our content. This is how it works. We can add something more complex to it, like an admin panel. So instead of us going to Superbase, we can even do this all in one app here directly. But I don't see a problem of admin user just switching true or false. So now simply we can go ahead and click publish. You will see this model where you can add your billing account and they will host this app for you on the Firebase hosting. The Superbase that I'm using is free version. I think uh, it's up to 50,000 users or some crazy number that you can use for free. So all you have to do now is just click publish. And there you have, you have a website that is fully done by AI where users can create accounts where they can sign in, see this review message. You just choose the users that you want to give access to and boom, they have access to your stuff. So in this example, ask AI to give me like this mock course, but obviously you can ask AI to give a uh, links to your secret YouTube videos or PDF, or you can even ask AI to build something on top, like a private community in there. So for example, if you want to build something like school, you can just go ahead back to the AI and say, when user is logged in, we should add forum section. They can add posts for that. Let's create a new table in our DB. Give me the SQL command for that as well. So I'll go ahead and copy it. We'll go to the super base, click SQL editor, insert our command here, hit run. So after this, we should see a new table called posts. So the data we store content, user ID who created this and unique post ID. That looks correct. Okay, so let's click sign in. Here we see our forum, write a post, test post. Let's hit post, boom, test post two and so on. Now let's go to our super base. So as you can see, it is actually stored. So here if we were to sign out and log in as our another user. Well, let's just create a second user test to example.com one, two, three, four, five, six, sign up, sign in. We don't have access users. Let's give him the access. True. Let's go back to the app right away in real time. It updated the things for us. We were logged in as another user and we already see all of the posts from the previous account. So it works. So we basically created our own place where users can log in. We can confirm them. We can add our course details. There is a forum where people can add their comments or posts. The last piece is to make it look less shitty. <laughs> well, the design right now is, I don't know, I don't like it. It's obviously just a quick design. So what we can do here is we'll say, now let's update the UI to be cool and fresh and make the post look more like social media. So let's see what will be the design updates for us. So it added some design. We should say the forum should be maybe on the right side or let's introduce tabs page tabs where first tab is the forum and second tab is the course. Also remove the like button. We have two tabs now, course and a forum. So in the forum, we can add post. 
and we can see when it was posted we can have the course tab so it is looks a bit less shitty now <laughs> obviously it's still not super nice so to improve the design we can obviously keep on going back and forth with it we can ask it to change the course tab we can say add a third tab called members that will show all users that have is confirmed true uh, so we have forum course and members so confirm members or we can say make members look like actual user blocks move the sign out button to the top right corner now for the course make the course topics clickable and fill the data with some mock text course some text data for us here we can ask it to make separate pages we could obviously connect it to even database and store it in the cloud ask it to create a whole admin panel on top where we can manage our course and so on so basically possibilities here are endless now here's a pretty cool part that maybe some of you do not even realize but i can keep on going back and forth with the chat but to make the app be in life i can obviously as i mentioned click publish but here's the beautiful part here if i go to the switch to code so we basically have two modes prototype and code and right now it entered the code base where basically it looks just like visual studio code where i can interact with the code i can see what it generated for us you can basically download this code and host it yourself so you don't even need to use firebase hosting and if you know how to code you can edit the code and then ask ai to add extra things to it well it is not new you can do similar things in courser but the beautiful part is that it all runs as a browser tab so you don't even need to install anything. But as you saw here, we've created the full functioning app where users can log in, uh, we can set up payment. Basically, that's like very small prototype of school, but we did it in uh, no time, basically, where we can manage our forum posts, where people can add posts, where we can have our little course here, where we can see the members. So keep in mind, all of this time, we're still using the free version of Firebase because there you can configure actually which AI to use more advanced Gemini versions for it that will generate even better code. But just for the sake of the experiment, I wanted to see what's possible with a free version. And you can try to copy my approach of what I did with the database management. So you basically create a super base database. You ask the AI to give you the SQL commands. So basically you actually fully remove any management of database. You just go ahead, click copy the SQL command, insert it. And as you saw in this video, basically you can create tables and columns and the AI will know all of the connections for you. But that's the idea. Most of the time what makes the app fully functional is when you actually connect it to services like Firebase or Superbase. So I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because here I talk about AI, show you cool tech tricks like this and generally talk about online entrepreneurship. So I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.